we're the Comic Anthologists. And if you, you want to show your support, hit the subscribe button and let us know what you think. And I'm going to provide the email for you to send any questions or comments that you have on the information that we are going to be providing for you in this broadcast today. And you could look us up, or rather email us at thecomicanthologist at gmail.com. Today, we are going to discuss the Black Panther. Now, the Black Panther made his first debut in 1966, July 1966, under the artistry of Stanley and Jack Kirby. Now, mind you, when they created the Black Panther, it was during a very tumultuous time because just a year before that, the Voting Rights Act was enacted so that way all African Americans had the ability to vote for wow. whatever yeah. things that were going on at that time. Yeah. And even before that, in 1964, segregation was ended, but that was still going on with the civil rights movement that was taking place at that time. So, and also, here's another tidbit that most people don't know about, is mm -hmm. that when Jeff Stanley and Jack Kirby had created the character, mm -hmm. at first, Jack Kirby had created the character calling him the Cold Tiger. Yeah, and the Cold Tiger, his outfit, well, um, it left something to be desired. Yes, it was a, left, a lot left to be desired. And at that point, Jack and Stan were like, well, let's go ahead and do some things different. And Jack decided to go ahead and name the Black Panther after two prominent, one was a prominent person and one was a prominent uh, military unit, which was the 761st Military Unit Tank Battalion which was all African-American, and they called themselves the Black Panthers. And also, oh, wow. too, you had Harold, the Black Panther, Willis, who was a professional fighter back then during that time frame. Oh, and wow. that's who Jack Kirby had named the Black Panther character. Now, mind you, when they created this character, he made his appearance in Fantastic Four, July 1966, number 52. And basically, he had sent a ship to the Fantastic Four, to them at the ben Baxter Building, to bring them as an invitation to Wakanda, but what he ended up doing was basically challenging them, then challenging them all four of them in combat to see if they right. were worthy enough to help him in their fight against Ulysses S. Claw. Now, mind you, this is the history of the Black Panther, it right? Could, and it goes back several, several centuries. Matter of fact, a few thousand years. But let's stick with the current times. Right now, the current iteration of the Black Panther we all know of is T'Challa, which is son of T'Chaka, who was the Black Panther before him. And we also had King Azuri, who was the Black Panther during World War II. Now, mind you, King Azuri fought Captain America at the time because they thought Captain America was bringing his allies right. to Wakanda to sit there and invade the country. But it was right. just a mis simple misunderstanding because Captain America was trying to warn the Wakandans and the king that the Nazis were coming right but after that trial by combat and found out that Steve Rogers was not there to steal but there to help they decided to put their resources together and become allies exactly and while everything had taken place right they were able to fight back the Nazis mm -hmm. and as a reward they gave Steve Rogers a chunk of vibranium which ended up using <laughs> ended up being used to create his iconic shield, which ended up becoming a, uh, an adamantium and a vibranium mix, which was never duplicated after that. Right, because it turned out to be that when the shield was created, with that uh, vibranium adamantium mix, it was basically an accident, something that could never be re replicated ever again. Now, mind you, once that took place, mm -hmm. he gave Captain America that vibranium, the shield was created, but the thing is, Captain America asked the king of Wakanda, can you give me something that will become a symbol to help us defeat the Axis powers right. of World War II? Well, they gave him a chunk of that vibranium, and history was created as a result because that vibranium, just like we just discussed about mm -hmm. the shield, ended up becoming the iconic symbol of freedom and hope against the Axis powers during World War II, and the Nazis were routed at that point. Right. And that's something they haven't discussed in any of the movies, but... Of course, in the movies, you have to change up the, the stories just a little bit just so that you can, can contain and keep the narrative going and everything. Because um, if you try to go on with the narrative that's in the books, 
you're gonna be that's like maybe you're talking about like multiple parts movies or a TV series or whatever but it's a lot much longer and for a, a feature film you have to condense the material and you have to condense the story so some things have to be left out some things are put in like the key parts are left in um, but then they're left out at the same time depending so, on uh, certain parts of history and yes it's mind you this was never explored in the film because you know basically back Black Panther made his appearance in Captain America Civil War right back in 2016 yes yes in any case he made his appearance King T'Chaka was killed by a bomb at the UN mm -hmm. uh, UN building at the time where they were and was supposedly killed by the Winter Soldier, but we all know the story of that one. Yeah, if you yeah. haven't seen the movie, I won't give away, give away what's going, what happened in the film, but you'll know what, what I'm talking about. Right. But in the comic book lore, Ulysses S. Claw was the one that killed T'Chaka mm -hmm. and in, inadvertently basically made T'Challa king at that point. And T'Challa at the time was only 13 years old. Right. Now, mind you, he took one of the vibranium weapons or one of the sound weapons that one of his henchmen and it wasn't vibranium based at the time. They stole a vibranium before creating the weapon, using the using the weapon right. to create sound to literally kill whoever got in their way. Yeah. Now, mind you, T'Chaka took one of the soldier's weapons and shot Ulysses' claw in the right hand and blew it apart as a result of being having vengeance against Claw for killing his, killing dad. his dad. Right. Exactly. So that is the history right there is where Claw was the one that killed his father, not the Winter Soldier or Baron Zemo from the movie, which, like I said, will, you will see if you haven't seen Captain America Civil War. Now, mind you, the Black Panther has now transcended things in terms of pop culture, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now, my next question to you, what is your most favorite story right now in the Black Panther lore that's current right now? Right now, my favorite story right now is the uh, story written by Tanisha Coates, and it's called the Intergalactic Kingdom of Wakanda. Really? Yes. Okay. And basically, you have T'Challa pulled out of his element of Wakanda, and basically, he's in. He's basically fighting space battles against aliens, against the Kingdom of Wakanda, because it's an intergalactic kingdom. Because his memory's been wiped, he's been forced to work as a slave, and um, it takes T'Challa's character and puts him in a different, totally different setting that hasn't been done before, and more mysteries are starting to unfold as I've been reading the book. And it's, it's phenomenal, and it's like, I can't wait for the next issue to, to get my hands on the next issue. Okay. Yeah, so that right now is my current, um, my current um, favorite story right okay. at this point. What about yours? My favorite story would have to be the one where it was Storm, where basically T'Chaka, not T'Chaka, sorry, T'Challa and Oro met for the first time when T'Challa was on walkabout to prove his manhood as a teenager. Mm -hmm. And he met the teenage future member of the X-Men in Africa at that time near Wakanda. Now, mind you, those two helped each other while they were in the, in the uh, jungle or whatnot to help each other to survive because right. she was already a thief and just living on her own since her parents were killed in an accident. Right. But that's another story for another time when it deals with the X-Men. Now, getting back to this, she was a teenager, he was a teenager, they both fell in love with each other, but they also helped each other and eventually they ended up becoming a married couple. But it, uh, but that marriage that they had was short lived as a result of there was a series called uh, Avengers vs. X Men that came out in 2012, and basically some things went down where um, they had to pick sides. And being a married couple, Storm was with the X Men, Black, Black Panther, Panther was, was with, with the Avengers, Avengers, and that created a whole set of conflict, which and ultimately they broke up. It destroyed their marriage. Yeah. And it was a sad moment, but it was basically one of those things where Black Panther told Storm, he says, listen, our marriage is a no. You go your own way because of what you just did. And one thing that got to me was, uh, there was a book that was 
published coincide uh, that was coincide with Avengers vs X Men mm -hmm. called A vs X, mm -hmm. and one of the issues had Black Panther vs Storm, and that book was mostly consisting mostly of like the battles that go on between the characters with very little dialogue, but one of the final panels when they had the final battle where the where Black Panther and Storm parted ways, mm -hmm. the final caption says at the bottom of the of, of the bottom of the uh, of the uh, of the artwork page. or yeah. the bottom of the page there are no winners mm. so in other words it was you win I win we, we lose. lose exactly and that's exactly what happened to quote CC Peniston from that song from back on our second album but that's basically the whole basis of that story where Storm and Black Panther eventually broke up and mind you they were the best couple but unfortunately it was not meant to last now in terms of pop culture the Black Panther has now been created as a movie, and that came out on February 16th of 2018. And no one knew it was going to turn into the phenomenal success that it has become. Can we say phenomenal juggernaut? Exactly. Yeah. Because the film had ended up grossing over $700 million here in the States, ultimately over time. And eventually, worldwide, mm -hmm. it did $1.35 billion at the box office, which had never been done before with not only a black film but a superhero film of this caliber and also uh, become all black pretty much 99.9% .9 black cast as well and it was done with so many talented yeah. people so many talented actors so many, many talented creators it was well, done, it was it well was, written it was well written yeah. it was done with the notion of identifying where we came from and a lot of people were able to embrace that when it came out mm -hmm. and going to the movie theaters i saw a lot of people literally wearing African garb and just basically embracing this phenomenon, what they called the Black Panther. Not only enjoying the movie, but seeing it multiple times, having an award-winning type, uh, award-winning soundtrack, but also just seeing the excitement and the awe and just... Can we say the hashtag, Wakanda forever? Yes, Wakanda forever. Yeah, so. And a lot of people were doing that at the movie theaters because I witnessed it myself in Burbank one weekend, the weekend it came out, I went to see another movie and I witnessed it for myself and there were nothing but people sitting in front of the entire display of it and just taking pictures yeah. and saying, Wakanda forever! Yeah. And that's exactly the cultural identification. Even though Wakanda does not exist, they even had a flight going to Wakanda <laughs> at the Atlanta airport. It was flight 123, but they put that there in honor of the movie because it was so successful right, at that right. time. Exactly. Well, so, in any case, we will do a part two to this segment we call it regarding the Black Panther. But if you have any questions or anything or comments or whatnot, you can reach us at thecomicanthologist at gmail.com. And once again, click the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Thank you for your support, and we will catch you at another time. Peace. Wakanda forever. Yeah.